everybody. My name is Kanti. I'm Cyber's Chief of Operations. I was about to say strategy, but I'm Cyber's Chief of Operations. And this week, we are so excited that you could join us for another Cyber Conversation that is brought to you by Periton. Um, before I introduce our wonderful guest today, I want to give you a little bit of information about Cyber. Cyber is an organization that is based out of Dakota State University in South Dakota. And our mission is to encourage, empower, and inspire young women about and bring more cyber awareness to them so that they enter the cybersecurity workforce when they grow up. And to this extent, we launched the Cyber Conversations where you can ask questions of the professionals that come on and you can get answers from them firsthand. So um, without further ado, let me introduce you to Uta. I sincerely hope I pronounced that correctly. I that practiced a little bit before. <laughs> and Uta is originally from, her mother was a professor of physics and astronomy and her father uh, is, has a PhD in laser physics. And she has always been surrounded by science. And later when she was in high school, she wanted to uh, work with STEM. And so that's the direction her career took off in. She worked at Checkpoint and since the beginning of 2020, she has been part of the French team HashCore. And she is responsible for the regional partners and her team offers a variety of solutions to help accelerate customers transformation to the cloud in a more secure and controlled manner. Ruta, thank you so much for being on Cyber Conversations with us and I will give the floor to you now. Thank you, Kanti. That was a very nice introduction. Hello, everyone. Welcome. And I'm really happy to be here with you and, and to share my, my little story of, of my career in, in IT and specifically in cybersecurity. So as Kanti said, my name is Ruta Regregi. I am Partner Sales Director at HashiCorp in France. And I really welcome this opportunity to be speaking to you today. So a bit of history. So I'm originally from Lithuania. I marked it on the, on the map of Europe in red. It's a small country in Northeastern Europe. And up until um, 1989, the country was part of what, what was known back in the day as a Soviet Union. And so everything behind that, it was, you know, we were said that we were behind the Iron Curtain. So I was born in a year 1984, and it coincides with the, with the title of very famous book by George Orwell. And it's, it's a great reading. I, I really suggest, you know, all of you who, who likes reading books to really look into this one, because even though George Orwell lived long before the year 1984, it was amazing how precisely he predicted the, the, the society or, or, you know, and, and just the, the, the landscape of how some areas would look like. And here you have a picture uh, of buildings. And it was one of, so I lived, I grew up in, in one such building, which was, you know, if you, if you look from, from above, you would see, you would have districts of many, many, these gray, very ugly, very boring um, buildings with many, many windows, which look, each one of them look, looks just, you know, like uh, the other one. And there are many little families who live inside, and one such family was was my family. So we started in, in a humble way. Back in the day, you have to um, imagine that there were not many opportunities. You know, we were really uh, living under very heavy propaganda. Uh, we did not have many material things. Uh, we had very limited, you know, energy supplies, food ratios, and so on. So you can imagine living with this mindset of, of limit. You cannot really dream about, you know, bigger things, about career and all those things. But as, as Kanti said, my parents, they were coming from academia. And while we, it, it was not like you could not afford to do nicer things. They just didn't exist, except for culture and science. So science was always something celebrated. Um, we had great universities, we had great schools, and we had great teachers. To, to give that science to, to, to the young generation. And so one thing I really remember my parents um, telling me and my sister um, that, you know, whatever you learn, nobody can take it away from you. So you 
you need to study, you need to learn as much as you can, you need to, you need to read as much as you can to absorb that information, to absorb that knowledge, and, and, and it will follow in your life with you uh, wherever you go. So you need to be curious, you, you need to have your heart open to, to learn and, and to explore the life that is um, around you. Um, fast forward, I graduated from high school and that was where, when really a lot of opportunities uh, came along. And, this, and in 2002, I moved with my, par with my parents to Austria, uh, to the capital city Vienna, which is known for its music, for its culture and arts, and, and it's very proper and it's very safe. And this is where I started uh, studying um, computer science at the university. And back in the day, you, you need to imagine that, you know, exchange. So it was internet was just being born. It was just being kind of starting to, to be available to the wider audience. And the information exchange was happening on the floppy disks, which were very fragile. They didn't hold a lot of information. And yet already then we started talking about the notion of security, of digital security. So cyber world, I think it was, you know, not even born back in the day. But this was, it sounded so interesting. You know, I didn't even know what it was, but it was something like, oh, wow, you know, maybe one day I would like to really, you know, look more into that area. And so after I graduated from, from um, computer science, uh, bachelor studies, I got my first internship and it was, it happened to be HP. So I, I'm really, really happy because it, it was an amazing start in, in, the, in the career in, uh, for me as a, as a young person. And so when I started at HP, I was responsible. It was internship, right? So, you know, very little paid, but with a lot of opportunity. And so I was an intern in a marketing team and I was taking care of Southeastern Europe. So emerging countries, very small countries who were really trying to, to build you know, infrastructure so to, to, make, to make life easier for their societies. And slowly, step by step, I grew into a proper marketing role. And then because I really liked you know, being close to our local partners, to our customers, one day I was offered um, a sales job in, within HP software. And, um, and that's when my real career of, of today um, has begun. And um, so within HP Software Portfolio, we had various different uh, tools and solutions, and some of them were in the, in the cybersecurity um, area. Um, at some point, I met a wonderful guy, um, a French guy, uh, who became uh, my husband and a father of my kids. So today we have two kids, and actually we moved to France. So this is where I'm located today. Uh, when I moved to France, I, I moved my contract with HP Software as well. And this is one of the perks, if I may say so. If you work in this environment, um, it's really much more flexible than any other type of jobs you may have. Because if you work for a global company, many times it's quite easy for you to move the locations because you know you may meet somebody you like and you may want to go to that place where that person lives or you may want to change the climate or whatever other reason you may have. In IT, because we're so technology advanced more than any other industry, it gives you also possibilities and options to do it from wherever you want, as long as you do your job, right? So I moved to France. We got those uh, uh, two, two wonderful kids. And this is the, the time in a woman's life when you know, many times we're told, oh, you need to choose, you know, career or family. You, you choose what you want, right? It's if you want to, to be a mom, if you want to be a wife, or if you don't want, it's up to you. Um, I just want to tell you that it's possible. It's possible to have everything you want. And it's possible to, to work out the setup that is convenient for you. So you don't need to work very late hours and, and you know, then wake up early morning and rush your kids to school. It's all part, you know, it's the way you will set up your life, but everything is possible. After having the, the kids, I even took some time off to, to be with them, to see them grow. Um, I had the opportunity to come back to, to my old job and, and even a better job because the, the company evolved, because the, the teams evolved. Um, and then at some point, I, I met some very nice people from Checkpoint. So that is, it's a cybersecurity powerhouse. 
uh, one of the top security companies in the world, uh, Israeli based. And when I went to Checkpoint, I met some, some like the smartest women I've seen in the industry. And they, they were, they weren't many. Okay. So we still speak about an industry primarily driven by, by, by the, the male teams, if you want. Um, but in Checkpoint, you had a few women which were very, very highly placed. They were directing the strategy of the company, where the company is, is going. And so one, one of them was one of the co-founders. She was a COO. Then it was a chief financial officer. There were many midline managers, um, great women. And, um, and I was observing them and I was really wondering, you know, how do they do it? How do they get there? What, what's the secret? And what I figured out, there is no rule, there is no one secret. Sometimes we can be really be uh, lured in, into, into thinking that if you want to go high, you need to, you know, maybe be tough, you need, you need to act like a man. You know what? Be yourself. And, and I really mean it. Because if you try to be somehow stronger than you are, if you try to be louder or, or more extrovert or, or whatever that is, you think you, you need to you know, you, you, you need to do in order to get somewhere. It, it's not like this, yeah? You need to be yourself. You need to listen to yourself. You need, and you will for sure find the true strength which is within you and use it in the way that is comfortable for you. And in most cases, it may take a bit more time, but you will feel good in yourself and, and you will get the success that you want um, in, in your professional life. After a couple of years at Checkpoint, um, I found uh, a great opportunity at HashiCorp. HashiCorp, it's an American late stage startup um, with, um, with a community that is really, really inclusive. And I think this is really you know, my, my best job that, that I've ever had. And I'm really, really proud and happy about it. And, um, and actually, I was telling to Kanti just before we, we started uh, speaking, so I was telling her that I'm coming after two days in, um, in a big conference, cybersecurity conference, which was happening in the north of France. And we had about maybe 5,000 people all in all. And you could count women on one hand fingers. Not many. But you know what? When you speak to any guy in that conference room, um, everybody, every single one of them would tell you that, you know, in the industry, we need more women because we have a different approach we have we have more varied backgrounds we have different skill set because of who we are as women right and and this notion that we're maybe softer and so and you know um maybe more flexible this is needed and and just to to really have companies successful you need to have a diversity which is which is you know, ranging very, very wide. And so today at HashiCorp, I see this is happening. Um, just in France, we have um, a, a lady leading a sales team and, and she can be tough, right? She can really draw the limits very, very in, in, in a hard way. But at the same time, she's, she's very kind, she's very human and she's curious. And, and this is, you know, it shows that you, you don't need to follow some kind of, you know, some kind of, objectives that you maybe see in the movies or, or elsewhere. It's really, you bring your best self and, and that should be the best thing that you can give for your career. Um, I'm basically done. If I may now uh, take a couple of questions. Thank you so much, Luca. That was really encouraging. Some of the things that you said on there resonate, I'm pretty sure with everybody in the world, most women in the world. And, and you just have to be yourself. I, I like what you said. You can't push yourself to change your entire personality. You know, it, it doesn't happen in one setting. If you wanna be constructive, like not constructive, if you are actively looking to change something, to improve upon something in yourself, then by all means, you know, we have to go for it. But changing or doing something just for the sake of doing something is not constructive. It's not healthy for us. And what you said about 
the number of women at the conference that you were at being very few that, that you could literally count them on your fingers. It's not something new. We have seen that so many times over and over again. And it's nice. Uh, it's actually not nice. It not Nice is not the word that's conveying what I'm feeling right. It's hopeful. It's a good feeling. Like it's a hopeful feeling that many industries or many people at the conferences, you know, men are recognizing that there need to be more women in this field because we bring diversity in solutions, in thinking, in doing things. And I love that. I really do. Great, great. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, you were saying something. No, I, I think you, you summarized it very well. And I want just to highlight, I, I believe that in many times when you when you listen to the professionals of today speaking to the community, we we maybe cut some edges and we say, you know, this was my road and it was great. And I think it's very important to say that we fail often, that when we fail, it hurts. But when you stand up and you continue, you know, your, your job, which you actually like, that's where true real, the results come and that's where true satisfaction comes. And I would like to also to say that it, it's okay to, to start something, to try it, and it may not work, right? You, you may find out that, hey, maybe cybersecurity is not even interesting for me. But you know what? In IT, you have a lot more things you can do and you can come back because the, the innovation is changing all the time because the companies are evolving all the time. So you have progressively more opportunities as the time goes, okay? So if you one day find yourself stuck, you don't know what to do, it's not working, you know, change the direction. You can come back or you can do something completely, completely different. There is a lot of opportunity in the industry and, and you can be from engineer, you can be marketing, you can be finance, you can be, you can be sales, you can be a manager, anything you want to be. And, and it's, it's also an industry which is, I think, it's, it's more inclusive than maybe some other industries. You, you have people who have maybe higher educational level as well. So they tend to be more polite than just, you know, somewhere else. Um, so, you know, if, if you have even the slightest interest into the, into the industry, in, in IT, in, in, in security, really, really go for it. Yeah, and I like how you highlighted that IT as a whole. You know, it's such a fluid industry. There's always something new to do. It's not as, it's not one of the, the natural sciences only have a limited scope where you can focus on or what you can work on. It's such a fluid field. There are so many things you can do in there. You know, you can jump from one role to the other and to the other and so on and so forth, if you so wish, not that you should, but if you wanted to, then by all means, but yeah. Um, we are now opening the floor for questions. Please remember if you have any questions for Ruta, please put them in the Q&A. Uh, button in your Zoom control panel, and we will answer all, or we will try to answer all the questions. Um, while they are coming up with questions, Rita, could you tell us a little bit about your job? Like, just a little bit more insight into your job. Okay, okay. Job and what do you do on a day to day basis? Okay, uh, yeah, great, great question. So, a partner sales role is a very interesting role because it is a sales role. And don't forget, sales roles are very stressful, but it's the sales that is driving business and that is earning money to the company. So this is some of the most important roles that you can have in an IT company. Being partner sales, you are not at the exact front line. You, you have a bit of buffer of flexibility if something doesn't work because as sales you're measured on numbers right so that's that's all that counts in partner role you have a bit more flexibility and you have a bit more flexibility to maneuver so with partners you need to 
you need to work on on several areas so you need to work with the, on the technology with them you need to train them you need to uh, give them the the technical support so that they are confident in selling your solution and talking about your solution then you need to do the hardline sales job so you need to motivate them you need to sell yourself your company your brand your your solution whatever that is to your partners and then you need to build the whole go to market plan together with them so it's it's a very varied uh, role um i like it so much because you know since i so, so it's been more than 12 years that i'm doing exactly partner roles and and this is it, it's it's such a such a varied role it, it's never boring i promise it's never boring and so my my you know main tasks are to to find the right partners to identify them on the market to to approach them to talk to them to to try to you know set some kind of um, interest points joint interest points and um, and from that you know build a plan together um, how we will reach certain results that we agree upon also together Right. And so, so if I look at my everyday, it's calls, 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 and emails, emails, emails with the partners. And, um, and yeah, we just, we, we work on, on various campaigns. Um, and, you know, when I say campaign, it can be a, visit, a physical event. Now that we can go out again, um, it can be a webinar, virtual workshop, some kind of digital campaigns. So building all of those, this is what I'm doing really every day. Awesome. Um, do you get to be, or does your job allow a lot of creativity when you take on a sales role? It really depends on which company you're at. Okay. So if you are in maybe some more classical areas like today's HPE, Dell, IBM, something more of that, um, you know, main line, that may be, you, you may need to be a bit more within some kind of rules. At HashiCorp, we are young, we're a small company, we're a startup. So at the same time, you need to be everything, you know, in, in your role, you need to be finance, marketing and technical and sales and so on and so on. So if you're not creative, don't do it, honestly, because every day you need to pull out you know, rabbits from your, from your hat in different color. Yeah. So, the, so that's, that's absolutely needed. <laughs> I love that. Um, so then, I have a few more questions. So are you a part of any um, groups or communities that are focused more on women in security? Right. Um, actually, at HashiCorp, we have, and again, it's a very small company I'm talking about. We're over a thousand, something like 1,500 people. And we have a a group employee resource group uh, for women it's uh, women of HashiCorp and this group is working on creating a community which is inclusive of everybody so you can be a woman a man or identify yourself in the way you want and the goal of that group is of, of our group is to educate our wider ecosystem specifically within HashiCorp about how to be more inclusive, how to take care about your communication, what type of messages you send. Because sometimes you see something and you know the message is created at the receiver. And, and so we try to educate our surroundings, men and women alike, um, that you know, when you address people, you say folks and y'all and, and you know everybody you, you, you try to include everybody and um, and we create allyships. So so that uh, we have different type of roles who, who take care of uh, career development, of uh, psychological assistance, of any type of um, maybe book, uh, books club within that women of HashiCorp. So we have it and, and, and it's growing and we have a lot, a lot of interest from women and men alike. Awesome, I like that. It's a well-rounded community that you have yes 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 and and i've seen it from the beginning as as it was just being created um and um, and i think it makes a lot of sense you know it, it's not to say you know this is women and, and we take care of, and we try to drive women women's careers and so on 
we we help women because there are still a lot of stigmas around us you know we it's much better than it used to be but there is a lot of work to be still done and we cannot do it alone we need our allies from every other social group around us i couldn't agree with you more um so what is one risk that you took in your career that really paid off um actually what i'm doing exactly right now i am the most shyest person ever i am terrified when i need to talk to people and you know in front of wider audience and so every time i step on the stage every time i talk to a wider audience it's it's my risk because i'm afraid of everything okay but it's so rewarding that that when I see the reaction, then when I see the positive outcomes, I see this is a risk really worth taking. And so yeah, I face it every day and, and this is my, my personal battle. And yeah, I'm, I'm not, not ashamed of it. I love that. I love that so much. And it's a lot of people don't understand that speaking to strangers or you know, addressing large audiences doesn't come naturally to a lot of us. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of effort. It takes a lot of practice. You know, and you build up to it. But I love your answer. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. No, thank you. Um, I have a couple more questions because uh, time is running out. Mm -hmm. And what would you like your lasting impact to be? If there's one thing that you could say, you know, this is, her legacy, what would that something be for you? You know, I'm, it, it's, a, it's a, such a good question and it hits really, you know, home base. At HashiCorp, everything we do is for the first time. And this is maybe, you know, it, 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 would, it would remind me of another risk that I took coming from Checkpoint, well-established brand, well-established company, um, channel partner, very well-defined. And yet I went into a, a startup I didn't even know the name of the company. I was like, what's that? <laughs> um, and so everything we do at HashiCorp is for the first time. And I want my name, my, my work to, to be the legacy of, of that HashiCorp partner brand in France and, and maybe wider Europe, EMEA. This is something I, I would take really pride in, you know, once I succeed to, to build a properly functioning um, partner network. Fantastic. And I really hope it happens. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my last question then to you is what is or what advice would you give to the young people that are watching this video right now? Listen to yourself. You will hear a lot of noise around you. You people telling you do this, do that. You will have some idols on the TV, in the social media, especially in the social media. Switch off everything. Listen to yourself. Close your eyes. Breathe in. What, what is this person in yourself? What does this person want? What is this person afraid of? What, what are the, the aspirations of this person? What is important to you? Because you will come back to the most basic truths which which are true okay there, there is there is you will not find happiness anywhere else except in yourself so be true to yourself because otherwise you will waste a lot of energy and i guarantee you the result will never satisfy you if you, if it doesn't come from your heart yeah that would be my my message to the young people thank you so much that was really Fantastic advice, thank you. And um, I'm now going to go ahead and launch a quick poll so we can assess who's watching the video right now and your interest in our program. Um, while you're filling out the poll, I also wanna give out some more information. So we have another Cyber Conversation scheduled for September 22nd. Our guest is Carolyn Crandall. She's the Chief Security Advocate 
at Adibald Networks. And we hope to see you all there. And also please follow us on all social media. We have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ruta, thank you so, so much for being our conference guest today. It was so amazing having you on here. Thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. And, and I think you're doing great, great job. It's very important what you're doing. So good luck with this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, have a very good night, everybody. And thank you. Thank you.